80-year-old man is presenting with acute onset of high fever, myalgias, and generalized malaise. He is given oseltamivir for treatment, which of the following is most likely impaired in the patient's affected cells as a result of treatment. Now, this patient is experiencing symptoms of a influenza infection, and the influenza virus has two really important surface proteins that we need to know. One of them is hemagglutinin, which is going to be allowing the virus to enter our cells. So the way I like to think about this is hemagglutinin is going to say hello, and this allows the virus to enter our cells. And this causes, or this allows the virus to cause an infection. Now the other really important surface protein is going to be neuraminidase. Neuraminidase is going to allow the virus to leave the cell in order to cause an infection in other cells. So the way you can think about this is neuraminidase is going to say nice to meet you and it is going to then leave this cell in order to cause an infection in other cells. So they both start with N. So this is how we can remember that the influenza virus uses neuraminidase to leave this cell to cause an infection in other cells. So the way oseltamivir and zanamivir is going to work is by inhibiting neuraminidase. And so if we inhibit neuraminidase, then we're going to block the ability of the virus to leave the infected cell to cause an infection elsewhere. So we're basically going to be limiting the ability of the virus to spread in our body. Now, the way I like to think about the mechanism of action or to remember the mechanism of action is by looking at the suffix. So both of these drugs end with mirir, and this is similar to the word moving. And so these drugs block the moving ability of the virus. So when we block raminidase, we're blocking the ability of the virus to move and infect other cells. So this information can be found on page 197 of first eight. So to answer the question, the answer choice is going to be D.